Welcome on in guys, three bold takes again with another overreaction. And this isn't really a overreaction to a specific game. It's more of a concept that I've been thinking of. Uh, but before we get into that, we are sponsored by SeatGeek. Use code three bold takes for $20 off your first purchase. Link is in the description. SeatGeek's awesome. Thanks for sponsoring this video. We sure do appreciate it. My overreaction, guys, or my thought and 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 a hatred that I have grown to uh, to have in my mind. Uh, traditions are ruined in college football now, and let me explain. With Florida, I and and the reason why I bring this up is because Florida State and Mike Norvell, he loves the transfer portal and brings people in. Last year, they asked the band and the school and the stadium folks to not do the chant on third down because they wanted them to play rap music and hype music. This at Florida state is one of the biggest traditions in college football to me. When you hear that, Oh, oh, oh you think of Florida state. You also may think of the Braves. You also may think of a couple of other teams, but when you talk college football, that's what you think about, Right. Colorado and Deion Sanders. Now, this, this was a report that, that may or may not be true. Deion denies it, but I'm still going to talk about it because the fact that this even came up is kind of concerning and, to, and to, to where we may go in the future. If Shador Sanders scores a touchdown, no playing the fight song. We want to play Shador's own rap song, Perfect Time. These things are... <laughs> These things are going to start to get worse and worse over the course of uh, the next five to ten years in college football to me because you bring in guys that are here for one-year stints that are looking for money grabs, that are looking to get to the league. They're not deep-rooted in a college uh, or traditions or they want to represent the university like they used to be. Now, I may be the only one that thinks that, but that kind of stuff pisses me off when when – the, the team itself asked you know the school to not do the the Florida State specialty. I mean, when you're an opposing team and you come in and it's third down and you're trying to get a play call and all you hear is that stinking chant, like that's menacing to me. I love hearing it on TV. Like it's intimidating. And and I would prefer you would think that over just some music playing. But for some reason, these kids that are coming in that don't care about Florida State don't want the tradition. They want the music because it maybe hypes them up, which I get. But at the end of the day, on third down or, or big plays in the game, what are you trying to do? You're trying to get a competitive advantage over the other team. Not necessarily hype you up, but maybe scare them a little bit. Make them not hear play calls. Make them overthink things. And how do you do that? And it's not by music that you hear at every other stadium. It's something that's unique to the university that you can't recreate when you practice. So I'm tired of it. I may be, I may be a drama queen over here, and, and I may be wrong in where this may go in the future, but it's just some little things that I'm saying, and it concerns me. Look, I, I'll say this. I... I don't think this is going to be something we have to worry about three or four years from now. I, I think these are like one-off things that are going to change back around. Cause you already see like from the Florida state example, specifically, you already see a lot of the fan base super mad about it. Uh, saying it's ruining their game day experience. Cause it's the way that they get hyper involved in the outcome of the games. And at the end of the day, the players, let's say they're not even a transfer player. Let's say they are deep-rooted at Virginia Tech. And we're going over, and like for whatever reason, they don't want to do Inter Sandman anymore. All right? But that, that player is there for up to five years maximum. Those fans that are hyper-obsessive are fans of Virginia Tech for their entire life. All right? So you you don't want to run the risk of alienating the people that pay the bills because the players don't pay the bills. You pay the players. The people who pay you are the fans that want the game day experience that they've had for years and want to keep. That's why I don't, I'm not worried about this super long term being an issue, but it is disheartening 
to see that they're even cowtelling a little bit away from serious, like uh, longstanding traditions at any school, whatever it may be, for temporary one-off players. That's that's heartbreaking here. Period. Yeah, I can't I can't agree more about this. And I was I was kind of thinking it in a different sense than the way you led, Freddie. I think a lot of this starts with my my two points might be is breaking regional barriers. So all the conferences having teams from California join their ACC conference or teams out west joining your SEC. Yeah, you know, I think that's a big thing. Your regional barriers being broken, the traditions don't matter as much anymore when you incorporate more teams. And then I, if I want to point to something that's just charm and soft was when I think a lot of this started to change when the Texas hook them uh, horns down thing started happening. They wouldn't allow that anymore. Some other things kind of mm -hmm. got in the way. Maybe the chant being um, viewed as the way it does. Maybe some people don't want it as much because it could be hurtful to some people is what people may think. And I, I do agree with your point that you did make though, Freddie, about the one-offs. I think the Deion Sanders one was kind of, if that's, any bit of true it's just absolutely heartbreaking for that culture because you think they're going to make a turnaround and then they do something stupid like that if they are playing a college football quarterbacks rap song not even a good song dude it's horrible freddie's listening guys he's, he's the number one listener right now um hashtag number one hater as well no just kidding um but if you're not letting the band play like kids are getting scholarships and money to perform in this band and to be a part of this band and you're not <laughs> allowing them to play. So your son who is going to leave for the draft probably never really mentioned Colorado in his NFL career as to something he accomplished and play his rap song instead is just absolutely wild. And I actually didn't know about the chant thing until um, that uh, to you guys just brought it up. So uh, I was very surprised, and it's just not. I hope that tradition uh, comes back around, like Quinn mentioned. And I hope it, it fixes itself. Well, and see, I want to point something out real quick, just based on what you were talking about. Like, we're not like the thing about the chant is this isn't even a, a discussion about like people's in, in like people's issues with its representation of native culture. That's not what this is about because it's not like they banned the chant, they still do it. This is about specifically not wanting them to do it on third down because the players want to do something else. Not for any stance or any reason, just because they prefer rap music. And that's, and, and I mean, that's the tail wagging the dog to me, um, which is not a direction that you want college football to go. Um, but anyways, that's kind of been our overreaction about traditions in college football and some concerns that I have personally moving forward. I um, hope you guys enjoyed. Remember, uh, $20 off uh, your first purchase on SeatGeek. Link in the description, code 3BoldTakes. And joined by uh, Chase and Quinn, I am Freddie. We will see you guys next week. Predictions and reactions every single week. Peace out.